Hi everyone, uh, we've got another Q&A today and our question today is what program uh, should I use or should I learn to become an interior designer? And unfortunately this is a very opinionated um, uh, like uh, question, so if, if you ask this um, every single person you speak to will give you a different answer <laughs> depending on um, uh, what they use or um, what that company have, has used or um, what they've specifically used in their business um, or their you know their personal preference so I have used um, predominant the, the majority of the programs that are out on the market today uh, so um, I'm going to try and give you a, an answer that is relevant um, or at least relevant for you to be able to make a, an informed decision for yourself and I think, um, I suppose, well, I can give you two answers. There'll be two kind of different directions. The first um, answer will be um, directed to those people who want to get a job in interior design because um, it matters more what you learn in that instance um, because you can't really learn a niche program unless um, the company that you're applying for a job with um, uses that program. So. I would kind of, um, so if you're applying for a job in interior design, I would be learning the program that the companies are using that you're, um, uh, that you're applying for work with. And, you know, um, answering the second question for those who are starting an interior design business or um, who are going to be solopreneurs or working for themselves or potentially the boss of a small company, um, the decision you make is really critical. So um, that will be, um, uh, I'll, I'll help guide you uh, uh, in a second with that kind of response. So if you're looking for a job in the industry, it's important to note that um, you're going to be using more mainstream programs. So um, uh, large firms typically use AutoCAD, Revit, um, uh, Archicad, um, some use Vectorworks, but not many these days anymore. Uh, but Revit these days is predominantly a leader, um, but that's if it's a multi-skilled uh, or multi, um, uh, like if they if, if the firm uh, provides architecture, interior design, and um, landscape design or master planning services, which predominantly the larger firms do. So they're going to have um, cross platforms like um, they'll well Revit typically works with um, uh, Arc. Uh, AutoCAD because um, the detailing is done in 2D still or in um, in uh, in AutoCAD. So, but um, all most of the other work and um, the BIM part of it all happens in in Revit. So, Revit would be my choice. Um, but obviously, if you're learning Revit, you're also going to be learning AutoCAD. Um, if you're working, for, if you're aiming to work for a large firm. Um, however, um, if you're specifically only working in interior design in that part, um, Revit might be too much to learn. I mean, it's, it's quite a complex program and it might just be um, uh, unnecessary. Um, and depending on what uh, part of interior design you're going to be going into, you might be spending all of your time working on Revit because um, if that's what you're proficient in, you're not going to be doing anything else except for drawing in Revit. Um, and um, AutoCAD, which is it's a pretty depressing life. <laughs> I've been there. Um, it's not that fun spending um, 18 hours a day working for a, a firm that um, where you're just drafting and drafting and drafting. So, um, which, I mean, you know, to get the experience in, um, in that is, is fantastic, but uh, you might also want to consider as well because even large firms who use Revit um, and and AutoCAD or even the ones that use Archicad. So uh, uh, the ones that use Archicad, I would research and see if they do use it. Um, predominantly these days, it's AutoCAD and and Revit. Um, the majority of large firms still use SketchUp. So um, if you use if you learn SketchUp, which is much easier to learn and faster to learn than um, Revit and AutoCAD. Um, you're going to be um, still a useful person in that um, in as a, 
in, in the group or in the team because somebody who can quickly model something up in Rev, uh, in SketchUp is actually, I mean, you can still import um, into and out of SketchUp from Revit and AutoCAD. So they're all compatible programs, which is um, really fantastic. So hopefully that's clear on if you're applying for a job because um, that it really depends on the industry standard, which country you're in and what um, programs that the companies are using. And um, typically if you're working with companies that are working with um, engineers, um, and architects, they'll be using something along the lines of um, Revit, AutoCAD, uh, Vectorworks, um, Archicad, or SketchUp even. Um, yeah, I think that kind of clarifies it. If you want to work for a smaller firm, uh, again, you, I think it's a little bit more dangerous if they're using a niche product to, um, to learn it, unless you're guaranteed a job. Um, and... Um, I think niche products are a little bit, well, I'll tell you why now. So let's go answer um, the question, if you, like, what program should you use if you're, um, if you're starting a business or wanting to become an interior designer who works for yourself? Um, and here I would have um, a few different answers in a way, because if you're only going to be working with yourself, you're not going to be working with architects, engineers or anyone else, you're not going to hire anyone. You can use whatever product you want. So whatever's the cheapest, typically, um, the easiest to learn, the fastest to use, and to give you the results that you're actually looking for, because you may not be drafting in your interior design business. All you may be doing is 3D modeling and rarely, maybe occasionally doing 2D layouts. So especially if you've got a styling business, you may never even draw unless you're really just um, trying to, uh, you know, fit a few things in. And then potentially you might outsource um, the three Ds, uh, which would probably cost you less than a program does every year. So, uh, you know, if you're working for yourself and you're only going to be working for yourself um, and you're not going to be hiring anyone, use whatever product you want. And um, those niche products are perfect for that because um, they're typically a lot lower in cost. They're a lot easier to use. They're using products in the end like uh, that you can kind of source direct to. So if you've got um, a, a sourcing based interior design business, that what makes sense for you, especially um, businesses more in the States, I find, um, where they provide, um, they're basically selling a lot of furniture rather than doing a lot of design work. So, um, or doing both, but um, uh, the design is based on, um, or their commission is based on selling the furniture items. And so therefore um, it makes sense to be um, working with a program that directly links to that, those furniture items so that you can use them in the models or into your drawings um, to scale. So does that make sense in terms of why you would use a niche product, um, like Room Sketcher, for example? Um, now, if you're starting an interior design business and you're, you've are you got a bigger vision, like you intend to potentially one day hire other people, and you're working on potentially renovation projects where you've got technicians, architects, um, engineers, uh, or you're going to be working or you have the vision to work on larger projects and not just doing design schemes, but potentially um, taking projects from start to finish, uh, where you need to detail um, uh, furniture, we need to detail um, uh, doors, do schedules and um, combine all of these parts of the building together, you're going to need a more complex program. Um, so not just 3D million, not just 3D um, or drafting and not just um, sourcing of furniture. You're going to want something that is a little bit more industry standard. And it's important to stick with industry standard, in my opinion, here, because uh, the pool that you're going to be hiring from is going to be much smaller if you've got a niche program that not many people know how to use. Um, so if you're intending on hiring people and you've got um, a, a, a niche product that you've uh, been using in your business, you're either going to have to train somebody to use that uh, that program in your office um, or hope that um, you can find somebody that knows how to use it, which is pretty rare, I found. Um, but if you're, you know, if you've already learned 
or if you were really using um, uh, a mainstream product like AutoCAD, ArcCAD, um, Revit or SketchUp, then you're 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 pretty um, you're pretty set. You'll you'll have a lot of people that know how to use these programs and and come to you uh, applying for work, and you'll have a nice big pool of people to choose from. Um, but it's not just that that you need to consider, and I think this is key um, because obviously which one you choose depends a lot on a few other factors and um, namely where you are in the world. I think that does matter because um, most people um, like where they where they're taught. So, for example, in Australia, we were all taught um, Archicad um, and the first and uh, the companies that I worked for in Australia did use Archicad. Um, so when I was in uh, when I worked for a small company in England, they used uh, Vectorworks. So um, I learnt Vectorworks. Um, and then when I worked in Norway and um, and for the large company, we used predominantly AutoCAD. Um, they did uh, also switch to Revit, but we also used, we used AutoCAD, we used Revit and we used SketchUp, all of those programs in that one company. So large firms, you'll find they'll use a much broader um, package of, um, or like CAD packages because um, depending on the teams and what the teams need, um, they'll, they'll kind of adjust um, to make things work more efficiently because um, they're not just going to, well, they've also got the money to do it too. So, so what else would you consider if you're working for yourself um, and uh, you want to um, learn a program? So which one do you use? So apart from going mainstream, which mainstream one do you choose? I would also consider um, compatibility with others. So unfortunately, this is where Archicad kind of falls down because AutoCAD, Archicad, um, SketchUp uh, kind of all do work together nicely because um, you're importing and exporting. Um, Archicad and Vectorworks, not so much. Um, although you can always export DXFs or um, like package up a program and export. Um, import um, and they are compatible with BIM so you you know it is cross um, platform but it, you lose a lot of information or some information does come through and it becomes frustrating trying to um, work with other professionals so uh, unless they're also using it so then you know that's fine and if it's pretty mainstream in your country then um, that might just there might just be that solution and you're happy with that um, so it requires a little bit of research as to which one, um, well, that's probably why you're watching this video anyway. <laughs> so um, which one makes sense for you. So another thing I would consider before making a final decision, um, besides mainstream popularity and what um, locally they're using, is the ease of use. Because there's no point in learning a program, for example, in my opinion, such as AutoCAD, unless... Um, uh, it's actually going to be really working for you. I mean, in my, this is just an opinion, but 3D in AutoCAD is not very successful. It's a very heavy loaded, clunky program. Um, and I mean, I still use it in my office, but um, we only use it for 2D. And in all honesty, if I wasn't so quick at using it, I probably wouldn't use it. I would probably just completely switch to um, SketchUp pretty much because um, it's a lot faster, a lot cheaper. Um, it's BIM compatible, it's AutoCAD compatible, it's um, compatible with Revit, um, everything else. And um, it's just uh, for what we do in terms of detailing, um, much faster to use. Um, and obviously, um, if I'm still working in 2D, that's, that wastes a lot of time <laughs> um, in terms of um, drafting because um, even just to draw an elevation, you've drawn it in 2D rather than just cutting a section um, in either Revit or SketchUp or Archicad. Um, so it's the way that you're working and the efficiency of using the program, um, especially, I mean, I would be going straight to a 3D program rather than learning a 2D program. Um, Vectorworks, um, a bit of both, a bit more easier um, to learn, I'd say. Um, 
and not as heavy loaded because don't forget AutoCAD is a very old program and that's why it still exists pretty much because um, it's been around for so long. It was designed for engineers, not for interior designers. So, you know, who needs 0. 0.00000 of a millimeter accuracy? You can waste a lot of time trying to connect lines and zooming in and making everything perfect when it's not even visible to the human eye. But in your drawing, you can get stuck and waste hours and hours trying to perfect your drawing and clean your drawing and keep it clean. And it's it can become quite a nightmare. Whereas, um, you know, that obviously isn't an issue anymore in, pro, um, in uh, uh, products such as Revit and Auto, uh, Archicad where all of your um, kind of um, components and um, layers are already set for you. Um, so hopefully that wasn't too complicated without knowing how programs work um, uh, to, uh, to help at least make a decision. Um, so in terms of popularity, uh, compatibility um, and how easy the program is to use on a day to day basis for the purposes that you're using it for. Um, you know, and do, uh, sorry to keep sidetracking, but don't forget there's you know, little things like if you're not detailing, you may never need a complicated program in the first place. So something like SketchUp might be a little bit more um, um, just easier to learn, cheaper and faster um, to use on a daily basis. And I keep leaning towards SketchUp and that's what obviously I teach in my mentorship program because, uh, you know, the majority of interior designers aren't doing complicated architecture <laughs> that requires, you know, really in-depth detailing. Um, learning to detail as an interior designer is critical, but your um, besides furniture design, which actually is still much faster and easier, I would say in um, uh, in SketchUp, and so much more flexible, rather than uh, you know creating components and um, you know uh, uh, volumes and shapes in either AutoCAD or Revit or even um, Archicad. It's um, and custom objects. It's uh, it's just so much more time consuming. We could just literally like extrude, <laughs> draw the shape extrude. It's, it's like that fast. So, um, you know, I, I always keep going back to SketchUp because, you know, it's far from perfect. It's not a perfect program, no program is, um, but I do go back to it is because of its simplicity and, um, you know, it, it is basic, but they are working on it, making it um, improved every year. Um, this isn't a sales pitch for um, it's not a sponsored video uh, for, for SketchUp, uh, but um, uh, I do often uh, fall back onto it because it's just so much faster to learn. So the learning curve is steep, but not as steep as AutoCAD, um, Archicad, um, Revit, or um, even Studio Max. Like, all of those, uh, you know, the, the bigger, more mainstream programs. I mean, Studio Max is... Uh, it's old. <laughs> Don't get. Yeah, I'm not even going to go into that. Um, so ease of use, complexity, um, um, mainstream compatibility, uh, popularity. I think all these things do come into play. Um, and two other things that I did want to raise is obviously the costs and the recurring costs of paying for the program. So obviously Revit is not cheap, um, but when you pay for that, you get um, I think AutoCAD Light at the same time. So uh, if you just pay for AutoCAD, it's you know still pretty pricey on its own. Um, SketchUp is getting more expensive, um, so I, I think that's a little bit naughty. But um, at the same time, because it was um, obviously I've known it for now, gosh, like thirteen years. So um, it's it, it's been going up in price, <laughs> um, and they used to. Well, they well right now they still offer a free drawing service, so there's a web version at the current time of recording this video because obviously that changes every year when they upgrade the program annoyingly. Um, but um, currently they have a web-based version which is free, so you could learn for free without having to invest in the program at all. And in the majority of cases, you could probably use the web version of SketchUp for free um, for the majority of your career <laughs> if. Um, if you're just doing basic 3D modeling. So if you're drafting, it's a different story, I'd say, because obviously exporting, I mean, unless you're witty enough to figure out how to export um, to scale um, on the 3D, on the on the web version, um, 
chuck it at you, <laughs> um, is, uh, uh, you know, it, it's possible. It's just, uh, it takes a little bit of, um, you need to know what you're doing, really. It's not a real a beginner thing to learn. Um, but a 3D modeling is, it's so easy. I mean, obviously, uh, just one little critique of SketchUp is um, the, the, the warehouse. Finding the pieces that you're looking for isn't always ideal, but um, getting them drawn up um, is really very cost effective and um, many larger companies. So if you're dealing with commercial work, for example, it's, uh, we'll, like, it's easy for us to contact the supplier and say, uh, can we have the 3D model um, for SketchUp or AutoCAD um, for this product? So they will um, supply them typically um, or search the product themselves um, or uh, contact us uh, uh, a, a modeler who um, who builds these for you. I know a few, so if you want to get in touch, I'll pass their details on for you. Um, so yeah, recurring costs. Um, and I think that's where, again, SketchUp is still the cheapest and um, the fact that you have a free version is pretty awesome as a part, um, or as opposed to, sorry, um, AutoCAD that gives you one month free to learn, which one month is nowhere near enough to learn AutoCAD. Um, and the uh, same as uh, Revit or ArchiCAD or Vectorworks. I mean, one boost for Vect Vectorworks is it's pretty. Um, same, but you can get the same result with Revit as well, I suppose. Um, it, it takes a lot of fiddling to get all your line weights right, but once you've set it all up, it, it, it can look quite nice. Uh, and finally, I think the last thing I want to go through is hardware. So if you need uh, a gaming machine, which I have, to um, run the programs efficiently on your computer, so accelerated hardware and, um, you know, there's nothing more irritating than um, buying a program, having it loaded onto your computer, and then your computer just can't handle the program. And this is possibly the pr biggest problem um, I've seen in offices, um, that I've seen in my own office. Um, I mean, it's it's a huge issue uh, to run 3D programs, um, a complex 3D programs. You need an expensive computer typically, or um, or you need to know somebody that can build a gaming machine for you, basically, um, which I did at the, uh, when I was a lot younger. So, thanks, Chris. It was, um, you know, it's really. The, the kind of computers and I've got my computer here so I can I can really appreciate how frustrating it is when you're trying to work and like you're seeing your wheel <laughs> like that's on a Mac so the Mac's over there but um like if the computer isn't responding and you're trying to get something out you're trying to issue drawings or you're trying to just finish a 3d model it's like 2 a.m in the morning and you're really you know waiting for your computer to do its thing um, especially, I mean, AutoCAD is a big um, problem with that because um, uh, it, you have to close it. Uh, you actually um, need to close the program once or twice a day if you're using it for extended periods like I used to, um, you know, 18 to 24 hours a day. Or sometimes, or if you're rendering, it'll be like, you know, three days where it used to be uh, three days. You'd have your computer on nonstop. So um, your computer needs to deal with that. <laughs> um, and it needs to be cost efficient for you. And you, you know, the amount of money we've spent on machines and computers, uh, I mean, that's the majority of where our investment has gone in our company. So you need know, to work efficiently um, as an interior designer, you don't need those kinds of programs that require those kinds of um, that or that kind of hardware, those kinds of computers. Um, Unless, of course, you do want to get into 3D rendering. Um, but again, the cost of rendering has dropped so much. Um, and it's, a, it's obviously a separate profession altogether. So unless you want to do a quick 3D render, um, which again, I mean, Revit will do it uh, with, with plugin. Um, SketchUp will do it with plugins. Um, uh, you, uh, there's no real... Um, reason to invest in, in, in too expensive or too um, heavy loaded a program. And I suppose you won't know what I mean until you learn it and you, you've learned a program 
you paid through the roof for it and then all of a sudden you you're using one percent of what you're paying for so um especially as an interior designer so hopefully that gives you a good indication of where to um focus your attention as a as a business owner or as a small business owner or somebody who's about to set up a company um, providing interior design services especially if you want to include drafting or um, drawing um, 3d modeling rendering or um, uh, just 2d space layouts and planning because um, there's a lot of um, more cost efficient time efficient um, ways um, to to provide drawings and 3d models and um, information than having to well, spend years learning programs like Revit, AutoCAD, um, uh, Vectorworks and um, uh, ARCHICAD proficiently enough to be able to um, provide a service from start to finish, um, especially if you're you know, um, starting off with concept and then going through detailing, construction drawings and then um, maybe even furniture design and um, well, height or heavy detailing. Um, up through to install and BIM even and um, uh, project management. So um, one more thing just to uh, add on, um, you can, it's a, it's a pain because you it's another application that you need to purchase to add BIM to SketchUp, but um, most people are never going to use it in interior design. So um, I, I think it's a, a bit of nonsense to even really yeah, bring it up, I suppose. But in architecture, yes, you would want to have a BIM relevant program, but um, in the interiors, um, unless you're really working with the large companies and as a one man band, it's highly unlikely anyway. So hopefully that gives you the answer that you're looking for. This is a lot longer than I expected to be talking about this topic, but as you'll see, there's a lot to consider but also um, every single person you speak to will give you their opinion. And I think that's dangerous because um, especially as somebody who doesn't know or has just started their search, um, you might be led down the wrong path, which wastes years of your time. So it's a really important um, thing to research um, and get right for yourself because obviously the answer is going to be different for everybody. So hopefully that helps um, and um, I'll see you next week for another Q&A.